Hello everyone and welcome back to another beginner Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you the basic functionality with the camera inside of Blender and we're going to make a simple scene and render an image. So let's get started. To start off I'm going to press shift and A to add and then I'm going to hover over camera and select camera. By default you'll probably have a camera in your scene so to get rid of everything just press A and then X. That will delete everything. Once you've done that you can add the camera like me and I'm just going to bring it up by pressing G and Z and then I'll press G and then shift Z to move it only on the X and Y axis and I will rotate it as well by pressing R and then X twice to rotate on the local X axis of the object. Now I'm going to create a very simple scene which we're going to use to render an image with. So first of all I'm going to press shift and A, go over to mesh, left click on plane and I'm going to scale it up. Now I'm going to press Shift A again, this time I'm going to select UV Sphere, G then Z then 1, G and then Shift Z to move only across the Y and X axis, and then move it over here. I'll press Shift A again, I'm going to create another object, this time I will create a cone, G, Z and 1, you can use any object you like, I'm just picking random objects for this tutorial. I'm going to press S and I'm going to press 2 to double the scale of the object. G and Z and 1 to move it up and I'll press G and Shift Z to move across the Y and X axis. I'm going to right click and press Shade Smooth and as you can see there is a little bit of weird shading on the shape. To fix that I'm going to come down to Object Data Properties and turn on Auto Smooth and that should fix it. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my sphere, left click to select it, right click, Shave Smooth. I will leave Auto Smooth off for this one. Now I'm going to press this button here or numpad 0 if you have a numpad to go into camera view. If you don't already have it turned on come over to view. This toolbar can be accessed with the N key and turn on camera to view. Now I can move my camera into position. As you can see my camera is a square shape and that's because I've changed the dimensions here from 1920 by 1080 to 1920 by 1920. This is because I usually make images on Instagram. However, for this one, I'm going to change my resolution. As you can see, if I press these three dots and three lines, I can choose from a bunch of presets. If I choose 4K, as you can see, we get this 4K. I can also choose this 1080p HDTV, and that will put my standard 1920 by 1080. I'm going to stick with that just now, and we're going to go on to our first camera setting. So, if you know anything about composition, there's something called the rule of thirds which is where we put our object of interest in one of the thirds. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to come down into the camera settings here, or object data properties, and here we can see there's a few options. I'm going to drop down viewport display, and I'm going to come down to composition guides. Take that out, and you see there's a few options here, but I'm going to go with thirds. And now there's these nice dotted lines through my camera. These will not show in the final render, these are just to help me position the elements in my seat. Now I'm going to move my camera until I get something I like. I'm going to scale this up and I'm going to move my camera so the sphere is in the third. I'm also going to move this shape back and kind of line it up in the other third somewhere. This is more a composition thing so don't worry too much about this, it's not the focus of this video. With the camera selected again, I am going to change the focal length. By default the focal length in Blender is set to 50 millimeters. And if I scale this up you can see it is zooming in to the image and this is almost like if you play any video games this is almost like the field of view when you change the field of view so when I decrease it you can see my field of view gets bigger when I increase it my field of view gets smaller so I'm going to leave it about 60 and again I'm going to move my objects into position and move my camera down and I'll maybe scale up my object so this is uh, up to you if you want to mess about with this. Great, so I'm happy with that just now. Now before we get into depth of field, I'm going to add some very simple materials. So first of all, let's enter this mode here called the viewport shading. So I just left click on that. And as you can see by default, these are plain white materials. Now I don't want all these lines and other bits and bobs in the way. So what I'm going to do is left click this show overlays button and it will make it all disappear. I'm also going to come to this drop down menu and turn off move, which should be off by default. And now I can see a lot better. With my sphere selected, which I can select up here or I can click here, 
I'll come down to this material tab and I'm going to press plus new. As you see, nothing will change and that's fine. And I'm going to make this a simple ruby ball. So I'll make this red in color and I will turn the roughness down to zero, transmission to one, and that will make a sort of red glass, which is a bit like what Ruby is. If you're rendering inside of Eevee, make sure to turn on this screen space refraction on any sort of glass material you make. I'll go over more settings for Eevee later. Now for the floor, I'm just gonna make a basic gray floor like that. In fact, I'm actually going to remove that material and leave it at the I'm now gonna select my clone with left click, back in this material properties, plus new, I'll make this one like an emerald colour. So I'll make this object green, turn the roughness value to 0, and I'll change the transmission value to 1. Again, just as a reminder, if you're rendering an Eevee, make sure to turn on screen space for bright. There's no harm in turning this if you're using cycles, it won't change. Brilliant. So now we've done that, we're going to go into our viewport shading mode, and I'm going to create a new light source. So I'm going to make this one in cycles but before i do that i'm going to show you some basic ev settings first of all i recommend keeping your viewpoint render the same as your render samples this is because ev is a real time engine so you might as well make the most of its capability then make sure ambient occlusion is on and turn this value to 0.5 if these settings aren't the same change them so they're the same as mine you can also turn on bloom and you can mess around with this threshold 0.5 usually works for me again copy my settings if they look different then we have screen space refractions. Make sure to turn off half res trace. And this refraction is really important for rendering glass. Although glass inside of Eevee will never look as good as it will in the cycles. Again, make sure these values are the same. So trace position to one and max roughness to 0.76. One of the most important things for Eevee is to turn on high bit depth shadows and soft shadows. And make sure the shadow cube size and cascade size is set to 4096. I feel like that gives me a really good result. Now I'm going to switch back to cycles and I'm going to create a new light source. Turn this overlays back on so I can see. Shift A and I'll come down to light and I'm going to left click sun. Now we'll have a basic sun lamp. Press G and then Z to move it up. G and then X to move it across the X axis. And for the sun lamp it gives you a sort of absolute light. So no matter how much I move it, it will still produce the same amount of light everywhere. The factor that changes the sun lamp is the rotation. So as you can see, if I press R and then X or Y and rotate it, you can see a cast shadow is now changing and the intensity of the light is also changing. Also rotate across the Z axis and now we can get a little bit more of an interesting shadow. Great, this is looking pretty good now. If you haven't already, make sure you save your scene. So to do that, you press Ctrl and then S, and then you can choose your directory. Now I'm going to left click on my camera again, and we're going to experiment with depth of field. So first thing I'll need to do is come down to the depth of field panel in my object data properties. Left click the checkbox, and I can choose an object to focus on. So in this case, I'm going to choose the sphere. As you can see, nothing changes, that's fine. So I'm just going to set my f-stop value to around 0.1. As you can see, now it's at 0.1, the whole image has gone very blurry. I can also switch to Eevee if I kind of want to see how it looks a lot clearer. That's more or less how it's looking. But I'm going to go back into Cycles, and I'm going to increase this a little bit more. So as you can see, when I increase this, it gets slightly less blurry, and I'm going to stop at around 0.7, I think we will do. Now I'm going to render out my image. But before I do that, I've got to make sure all my settings are correct. So for the sampling, keep in mind the higher this render sampling is, the longer it will take to render. So anywhere from around 100 to 1024 should do. I like to have it quite high. Make sure under denoising, you have render box checked and it's set to NLM. That will denoise all those horrible fireflies. Then under light paths, I'm going to set all these values to 128. Preset for that is full global illumination. So if you just click this, and that would set all these to 128. Points. Finally, under clamping, I'm going to make sure my direct light is set to 5 and my indirect light is set to 10. And that should be everything. Now to render my image, I'm going to left click here on this render tab and then left click render image. And now it's going to start rendering. 
As you can see, this isn't instantaneous and it is going to take a little while. That is a consequence of rendering inside of cycles. However, the results will be a lot nicer, especially when we're using glass materials. If you want more instant results, you can use EV and it will be a lot faster rendering. I use EV for a lot of my 3D artwork, but keep in mind that the glass material will not look as good in EV as it does in cycles. That's why for this video, I'm rendering this inside of cycles, but also giving you the knowledge you need to render an EV. So the image just finished rendering, and this is the result we got. So as you can see, the cone over here is more blurry than the ball in front, and that helps the viewer focus on the ball. So that's essentially everything you need to know about the basics of cameras and Blender. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you all found this useful. See you later!